Well, hello, everybody. Lakeisha McKnight is indeed here. Welcome to the virtual Bible study. Brand new day, right? This is a brand fresh new day. It's approximately 8.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and it is a Wednesday, May 2nd of 2018. Brand fresh new day. New mercies we see because of God. God and his amazingness allowed us to be able to wake up and see this day. And so I just want to welcome each and every one of you for being here. I really do. Um, it's a privilege, it's an honor to really be before you. Now, if you're new to the virtual Bible study, I want to tell you that normally uh, we have this particular study to occur on the timeline on Facebook. But because Facebook has made some changes to the audio live broadcasting feature, uh, we've decided to shift here since this is, a, this is the platform that we host a lot of our uh, streaming events on anyway. So before we get started with anything and before I go into any, um, you know, just the structure of how we do, do things with the virtual Bible study, I'm going to go ahead and share it. And that's what I encourage you to do. If you see an arrow, if you see a way in which you can go ahead and share it on social media, go ahead and do that because when you're sharing a Bible study period, it's almost like a form of evangelism. So I'm going to encourage you to go ahead and share it. Let me go and do that. I'm going to try to share it on my timeline on Facebook first. And <clears throat> I'm going to say, join me live on Spreaker for the virtual Bible of the day. All right, so I'm going to share it first on my timeline on Facebook. And then I am going to go ahead and share it in a group and on a fan page. Okay, in a group and on a fan page. So I will share that. Okay, so definitely feel free to share as I'm sharing it. I'm trying to practice what I preach uh, and encouraging other people to want to listen in as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the second place I'm going to share it is in the leadership. We have a leadership TKO group on Facebook. Okay, and that's where I'm going to share it next. Okay, here we go. So I've shared it there. And now I'm going to go and share it on my fan page. Just in case anyone wants to be inspired by the word of God this morning on the fan page. Okay, here we are. Okay. All right, perfect. Uh, so just to give you a heads up that we may attempt at some point in the near future to conduct the virtual Bible studies, maybe outdoors, depending on how it is outside. We'll we'll transition it outside because sometimes you got to do, do things different and it will be video. Okay, it will be video. So that'll be even more interesting. So stay tuned for that. Uh, more details about that is to come. However, we are right here on the speaker platform this morning. Uh, so again, there are a couple of things that you can do. Number one, you can hit the heart button next to the title of the message of the day. OK, that lets us know the audio is good and lets us know that you're listening in att attentively, attentively. And then also, if you've enjoyed anything you've heard thus far, you can also hit the heart button as well. Uh, secondly, because we're on the Springer platform, there is a chat feature. So feel free to leave a comment, ask a question uh, right there in that area. You are welcome to do that. OK, very, very welcome to do that. All right. And then, right, I do have yet another uh, thing that I would love for you to do. Feel free to share it. I know I mentioned that already, but go ahead and share that, share it. We want to evangelize and allow the gospel to visit different parts of the world. And I know that many of you from various countries listen into this particular station, which is the leadership TKO internet radio station. And so I want to encourage you to go ahead and share the broadcast today for the virtual Bible study with others that you know, who need to hear the word of God. All right. Because we know faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And so that's the reason why it's encouraged. I encourage you to go ahead and share it. Cool. All right. And so the way we do things is we go over certain parts of scripture. We talk about what it's saying right there in context and then also how it applies to us today as believers. 
So that's the way we, we do things. And I am reading from the New King James Version Bible, just in case you want to read word for word with me. All right, so let's go ahead and start with prayer. Uh, normally, the study lasts for about a half hour, maybe 40 minutes, depending on what, you know, how much content we covered and if there are any questions. OK, and if you hear a little bit of a ding noise and things of that nature, it's because uh, these devices are connected to Facebook and, you know, it pops up whenever someone sends a message. So just a little disclaimer. All right, here we go. So, Father in heaven, we thank you for this brand new day. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice there, Lord, and I will be glad in it. You are amazing. Hallelujah. You're amazing. And I thank you for, Father, allowing everyone else who's listening to this to wake up and rise up as well. You've given us the use of our limbs. You've given us the ability to breathe, taking this air that you are allowing us to borrow. And we thank you for it, God. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. We magnify your name over all problems, over all situations, God. We lift up your holy name for you're King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the ancient of days, that bright and morning star, that lily in the valley, the I am who I say I am. And so, God, we thank you. We glorify you. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for what you're going to do in this moment. We thank you for technology and allowing us to gather together by way of phone and computer. Hallelujah. And I know that you're in all of these places where we are at one time working on our behalf. God, And we thank you for that. And so, God, even in this moment, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for giving us peace. We thank you for purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's more work for us to do. That's the reason why we're here, God, and we thank you for that. And so, Lord, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Anything we've said or done or thought that hasn't glorified you, forgive us, Lord. Let the blood of Jesus wash away every one of our sins. Hallelujah. Create in us a clean heart, a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Help us to be more and more like Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, God, in this moment, we just come before you just humbly saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you for providing for us, meeting our basic needs, even giving us the desires of our hearts. We thank you for that. And we pray this morning for wisdom for knowledge, for understanding in the word of God. Hallelujah. And we just ask God that you will bless all others who have risen up this morning and as they're traveling to and fro, protect them and be with them as well. Your other sons and daughters around the world, be with them in this moment as well, God, in the name of Jesus. And so make your word plain, Father, as we read it, that we may understand and that we may be appliers of your word, applying it to our lives on a daily basis, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. All right, so thank you, thank you, thank you so much to each and every one of you listening in. Truly, truly do uh, appreciate each and every one of your listeners, your listenership, okay? Cool. All right, so I, I am reading from Luke chapter 17, okay? Luke 17, we're going to look at the rest of chapter 17. So that's verses 20 through 37. 20 through 37. Okay. Uh, And I'm going to read it. And I'm going to read the whole thing. And then we're going to go back and look at certain parts of the scripture. We're going to give a general synopsis of what it's about and how does this apply to us today? So that's the way we're going to do it. And so God guide us in this moment. And so let's look at that. Verse 20 reads as follows. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God would come, he entered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Okay. Nor will they say, see here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. I want you to take note of that verse there. At least that part of the verse, the kingdom of God 
is within you. Verse 22, then he said to the disciples, the days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the son of man and you will not see it. And they will say to you, look here or look there. Do not go after them or follow them. For as the lightning that flashes out of, out of one part under heaven shine to the other part under heaven, so also the Son of Man will be in his day. Verse 25. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate They drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Verse 31. And that day he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down and take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife? Remember Lot's wife? Verse 33. Whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Uh, Verse 35, two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Verse 36, two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Verse 37, and they answered and said to him, where, Lord? So he said to them, whoever or wherever the body is, there the eagles will be gathered together. All right. So that is the rest of chapter 17. So let's talk about what is being said here uh, and how, of course, this applies to us today. So as we can see, again, this is teaching on the se- on the second coming of Christ. Uh, you know, we look at verse 20 where it talks about when the kingdom of God will come, right? So they may have asked the question mockingly, having already concluded that he was not the Messiah. So they might have asked, you know, just said it just to be funny. Okay. Um, but, you know, there is a part of the verse that talks about um, he does not come with observation. Okay. He does not come with observation. And that's what he was saying to the Pharisees there. The kingdom of God does not come with observation. Kingdom of God is within you, right? The Pharisees believed that the Messiah's triumph would be immediate. They were looking for him to come overthrow Rome and set up the millennial kingdom. That's what they were thinking. But Christ's program was altogether different. Okay. Very, very different. Uh, He was inaugurating an era in which the kingdom of God would actually manifest Right in the rule of God, in men's hearts, right manifesting in the hearts of man, okay through faith in the Savior or Jesus, okay. So that kingdom was nearly confined to a particular geographical location, nor visible to the human eye. It will come quietly, invisibly, and without the normal pump. Right. That's that, you know, that show, that stuff that puts on entertainment and splendor associated with the arrival of a king. It's not about show. It's about heart change. Right. Jesus didn't he didn't suggest that the Old Testament promises of an earthly kingdom were were nullified. But that earthly visible manifestation of the kingdom is yet to come. It wasn't going to come just yet. So when he says the kingdom of God is within you, it's within people's hearts. Right. Within people's hearts, the pronoun could you know, hardly refer to the Pharisees in general. OK, so that's just something to know. But then he also mentions in verse 22 um, something important as well. He says, you know, the days will come. 
right? The days will come when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man and you will not see it, right? The days will come. So this is talking about introducing a brief section that has some similarities to the Olivet Course or Discourse that was found in Matthew. Uh, yeah, in the book of Matthew in chapters 24 and 25. It tells about how, you know, you would desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man. In other words, you're going to desire to have him physically present, okay? A longing for his return to set things in order, to bring, to make things right. There's going to come a time because it's going to be so terrible out here, right, on earth, that you're going to want that. Uh, but as we continue further with the rest of this chapter, it talks about how, um, even in verse 25, that, but first he must, he must suffer. Christ must suffer many things and be rejected of the generation. You know, it's, it's because it was the sovereign plan of God for Jesus to die as a substitute for sinners. He had to, he had to suffer. And that was the only way the perfect sacrifice would be set, Right. But then it also begins to talk about how the times are going to be worse and how the situation is going to be worse, even worse than some of the times of past, even including the time of Lot and his wife. And right. It talks about that in verse around verse 28 it says, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot. Right. Judgment came suddenly destroying the people in the midst of everyday activities. Right. That was happening in Sodom and Gomorrah. None of the things Jesus cited was with regard to Noah's day, where Lot's day were inherently sinful. But people were so, you know, focused and absorbed in the things of this life that they were, they were unprepared. When the time of judgment came, they were unprepared. And then he talks about, uh, in verse 31, talking about, um, you know, in those days he was on a, he who was on the, on the housetop, you know, in these different locations where people may be, you know, the typical house, you know, during this time had a flat roof with an, you know, external stairway. The danger would be so great that those on the roofs should flee without going into the house to get anything out. OK. And remember, during that time with Lot and his wife, and it also references it in this section here, how Lot's wife was destroyed on the very threshold of deliverance. Her attachment, because remember she looked behind her and she was told not to look behind. Her attachment to Sodom was so powerful that she delayed and looked back. She was overwhelmed by oncoming judgment just before reaching the place of safety. So she was so attached, you know, that she couldn't move forward and it, and it caused her death. So you got to be careful. Here's the thing about this chapter. First of all, know that Christ is coming. He's coming back, right? We we know that. The Bible says it, so it's going to happen. Uh, secondly, don't be attached to the things of the past, the things of this world, because it can be that decision maker between life and death, obviously. If you have to learn from the people who have made these mistakes in the past, um, these situations and stories, we are not to be attached to things of this world, nor the past. Listen, we don't own it. We don't control it. It's gone. So we can't be connected to that stuff. As believers, we have to move forward to our destination. While we're journeying through this earth, God is to give us the words we ought to say. We ought to fulfill his will, but never be attached to the things of the past. Never. Accomplishments, mistakes, riches, none of that stuff uh, truly matters. What matters is the salvation, your salvation, and those that you share it with, how you live your life before others, allowing the light of Christ to shine through you so that others would see the way and can make that decision on them for their own selves as to whether they want to join this journey as well. Okay. All right, cool. So that's what it really is saying in the, in the rest of this chapter, chapter 17. So be sure, look at where your focus is, make sure you're focusing forward as a believer upon our destination and fulfilling his will in the process. So thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're going to seek to go into chapter 18 of Luke, starting tomorrow, Lord willing, right? Looks like we have a pretty, pretty decent chapter size. Yep. Uh, and so we're probably going to split this up, okay? No, I know we're going to split it up. It's not might. <laughs> I know we are going to split it up. 
Uh, so it looks like we're probably going to do the first 17 verses. Okay. First 17 verses of chapter 18. We're probably going to cover that tomorrow by God's grace. Okay. By God's grace. So again, I appreciate each and every one of you being here on today. We're going to definitely pray to be dismissed. And so if you've enjoyed the message today, if you enjoyed the study today, like I said, feel free to give a heart or two. Okay. I know on Spreaker platform, you can just hit on, hit the, or click the heart button. So hit the heart button. You'll be well on your way. You'll be good. (laughs) Um, Let me see. Yeah. And just let me know if the, you know, if you will have questions or concerns, let me know. Uh, If Facebook decides to allow us to do the audio live streams again, I'll let you know as well uh, that we've moved back to the Facebook platform. But for right now, we're here and we thank each and every one of you for listening in and sharing today's Bible study episode here on the station. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for knowing that you came, that you're coming back. Hallelujah. You're coming back for the church. And so help us to be ready, not looking back, but looking forward towards our final destination, our eternal home. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'll bless our family members and friends. Allow us as believers to be a light in this world, sown upon the earth, carrying out your will in this world today. It's not about us, but it's all about you. It's about giving you the glory through this all because you deserve it. And so, Father, thank you in advance. Bless all the children going to school. Help them to get to school safely and back. Hallelujah. But bless bless us as we rise up, as we lie down. And help us, Father, to be this example in the world. Hallelujah. That light in the world, that salt upon the earth. And to apply this word to our lives, preparing us, helping us to be steadfast and ready and prepared as believers. Hallelujah. And so we thank you. And we honor you. And if there be someone who doesn't know you, God, may they just confess that Jesus is Lord and that you, Father, raised him from the grave. And the moment they believe, confess, acknowledging before that they were sinners, but that they believe and that they confess Jesus is Lord, they are saved as well. And so, Father, thank you. May your will be done in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen and amen.